Professor Jones here in the house to teach you something a little bit about intervals, the basis and foundation of a lot of the music that we listen to. Um, it's really important to gain an understanding of this in order for us to understand scales and chords. So right now, I'm going to go ahead, as we know, the names of our notes in the treble, you know, part of the clef, with the treble clef. So, can anybody tell me what these notes are? So we'll go ahead and label them. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And what is something that we noticed that we talked about? If you go eight steps, you end up on the same note. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And if I was to start on the D, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D would be the next one. And you see it goes consecutively. So depending on the music, you'll be starting on different notes at any given time. The thing that I want to talk about today with intervals is that these aren't all the notes. As a matter of fact, if you go to different parts of the world, there are even more notes than what we use here in the West. So, but for sake of just keeping everything simple, um, C to D is considered a whole step. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to go over here and show you another view, helpful view, our piano view, because that's the view of our staff. This is if for those of you that play piano or vibraphone, organ, it's going to look something like this. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you notice on piano, you have these pattern of two sets of black notes, three sets of black notes here, two sets of black notes, three sets of black notes. Two. It just keeps repeating. So it's the same. Just a different view, how that went, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. This does the same thing, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Then it repeats, look, same two notes, right? In front of the C, and then it goes up eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a good reference to have, and you can also use it if you want to get into your ear training and see how things sound. Really quickly, I'm just going to take a moment. Does anyone know what this is? Looks like a baby bee. That's on a line, and if it were on a space, it would look kind of like that. Yes, this is called a flat. And we use it to add some of those other notes. That I mentioned we're going to see how that works so if that's a flat then this is a yes somebody said I heard you a sharp make sure when you're drawing your sharps or flats the two lines the main the middle part of the the sharp or flat either falls on a line or falls on a space. That is really important so that it's clear what note you are referring to. So lastly, um, just really quick, if the, when we use sharps when we go to raise a note. So just if we, we're on C and we want to raise it, well, it just doesn't go to D it could go to this guy here. So this is what we call C sharp. I wanted to show a C sharp. In this one, 
then we'd have to do that. So it's another note in between there. It's not just C to D. So the other thing that we can do if we were on a D, and we're going to go over this many times, and we were going to go down by what we're calling a half step because intervals are made up of whole steps and half steps. Then we would call this a D flat. So right now it's written like a C sharp, but it can also be written from the perspective of a D. So if we go here, you see it on our piano view. This is a D and we go down one it now also becomes a D flat. So that's C sharp and D flat. Just a simple concept. I'm not gonna go any further with this right now. And hopefully you will be with me on my next video. Bye.